right. Hello, everyone. Um, just a little check about the slides and the clicker, right? And let's go to the next. OK. OK, so bottom is next. So my name is Anthony, and I'm an iOS lead developer at Aviv Group. And this company holds applications like uh, European real estate applications, like Sologe in France, ImoWeb in Belgium, and Imo ImoNet and ImoVelt in Germany. Um, today, I would like to share with you um, the issue we faced with working with the form validation in our applications and what solution we came up with and how it works under the hood. So let's say you have a form which requires the user to enter, to enter its username and optionally the, its phone number. So that can be a contact form, for example. And it can, the user can submit uh, the form through the validate button. And one key question that we have to ask for this kind of form is when to validate the fields. And one answer that will come up with, to most of us is obviously when the validate the submit button is tapped. When we want to validate the form, we want to ensure that all fields are uh, right and so we can work with it. But there are some other cases uh, that we can validate uh, each field to be more reactive to the user. So it can be when the user enters and, and exits the field, or when the value changes, for example. Uh, this is fine when you have one form to answer this question, but when you have multiple forms like that, you cannot just uh, answer this question like every single time, because you end up with, with inconsistent behavior on the UI. Some form will, will validate the field when the user enters and exits the field, and so on and some other will validate in other cases. So, and you will end up, as we did, with code duplication, because every form will have to validate every field and so on, so basically that was duplicated. So we ended up reinventing the wheel every, with every new form that we created. Um, but what if we had something that can enforce these rules to be answered every time, and you can just use it, and the validation would be automatically handled by this tool. And it will take care of validate the whole form upon the user validation, and each time, a, for instance, a value changes. And you will just plug, and pl plug it into the, your screen and into your feature, and it will handle everything. And even better, what if we, to create this thing, we would only need few things, like to let it know when the user taps the submit button, uh, which field to validate with the rules uh, according for each field, and let it have a way to notify us back that the validation has been succeeded. That would be great. And that, in other words, what if we had a unified form validation system? And that's what we came up with and we worked on uh, in our applications. Um, but just before I present you this, uh, solution we came up with. I want to open a small parenthesis about the architecture we use because it helped us actually build that tool. Uh, so the composable architecture, also, also known as TCA, really basically it's just like your view holds a store and it can send actions when you have like UI uh, interactions to, from the user. And these actions are handled by what's called a reducer that will hold all your business logic and it will update the state so that your view will be updated for the user. I won't go into more details about it, about it but I want to uh, emphasize a key feature in TCA, which is like how they handle bindings uh, with, with this architecture. Every time a binding has a new value, it will send a binding action, and this action will encode the key path to the value that is being validated. So for now, it's pretty abstract, but be careful, um, bear with me, it will be really handy just afterwards. If you want to know more about TCA, there was a great introduction talk uh, at Swift Connection last year, so uh, you can watch it uh, if you want on the Techno Connection website. I will, I will close the, the parenthesis and get back to our like ideal uh, tool that we want to make. Uh, as I said, we made it and we called it like form validation, like basic naming for now, and I will show you in code what it looks like, but for now it takes a lot of space in, in the screen, so let me just rotate it, make it less, less space, and put it aside. And now we have some code, some actually some reducer code, but we don't care about anything about it, but just know that there is a form validation. 
watch what's convenient. And if we expand it, we can see that we only have a few things that, need, that it needs to be created. Actually, we need a user action to let, the, to let it know when the user validates, uh, the, wants to submit the form. A on succeed action to let it know back the system so that the validation succeeds. And then the list of fields that needs to be validated. So for instance, there are two fields, and one is the username, for example. And how does it work under the hood? So for the form validation, uh, every time it receives an action, it will match against two possible cases. Either there is, it is the user action that we pass to it, so it knows that it has to validate every field, so it will go through each field, and if the validation succeeds, it will send back to us the validation succeed action so that we can send the form to the API or do anything we want. And the other case is this famous binding action. And actually, thanks to the fact that it encodes the key path to the value, we are able to get this, this specific field that needs to be validated and run, and run the validation for this field in particular so that the user knows that something went well or wrong when he inputs uh, the, the field. Talking about the field validation, what it looks like, it's basically just a function uh, which takes as input the state of the screen, of the form, and it will extract the value that needs to be validated from the state, and it will run each rules for it. And at the first rule that fails, it will just grab the, the error from the, from the rule and just display it, update the state to be able to be displayed to the user, and it will return false because it failed. And if no rule fails, it will just set back the error to nil so that we remove the error to the user and just return that everything went well. And talking about rules, we saw like two rules before, which is the non-empty and length, and they look like pretty much the same API than the field validation, but first, like, I want to emphasize that it needs like error message and a check closure that will in implement the validation. And the error message is pretty important to be here because with that, we are able to display a specific error for the specific validation so that we can really specifically clue the user what it needs to be changed to the input. And then it has a validation, a validate function that will take as input the, valid the value to validate and will check with the check closure and return the error message if something went wrong. And we will focus on the length function, how to create it, uh, so that we can have an idea of how to create like multiple rules and so on. So basically, it's just an extension to the rule struct, and we will have a static function, which will be specified to the bare minimum requirement for the value that we want to check. So here, for example, the value has to be uh, conform to the collection uh, protocol so that we can access its count value and check whether it's at least the character that we want to, the element that we want to make. And with this uh, component, we can basically validate any kind of forms, even a form that in which you just have to select a picture after all, like there is no picture, that's optional. We can just check that. And some other forms like the user profile, for example. And these screens don't, thankfully don't come from our applications <laughs> because the UI is pretty, pretty, um, pretty simple. But um, specifically for this conference, uh, we made a small project to showcase how to use the validation system and how it, is, it was implemented and it is available on GitHub. So you can like go to it, uh, get the code, how the validation form is actually implemented and maybe inspire yourself to get it and modify it as you need or update it to feel, uh, to use it on your applications. And lastly, you can like contact me if you want to have, to share any thoughts, uh, if you have any question about this topic on Gmail, LinkedIn and GitHub. And uh, thank you for your attention. I was pleased to share this with you guys. Thank you. No question from the audience. <laughs> That's okay. But we do have questions. Okay. Very declarative. Yeah. 
So thank you, Anthony. Um, my question would be about um, when you work with products, they want sometimes to get the product being, you know, um, uh, available for every country. So my question would be about localization. Where does um, localization strings, string key, or string resources fit uh, in our model? Um, um, so as you as you saw, like for now, they are pretty close to the reducer part because we declare all the validation rules on the reducer side and we um, keep the, the error uh, string with that. So uh, that would be on that side. Um, on, the other high, on the other side, obviously, can lead to some issues when you want to test them uh, because you have, in that case, ensure to test on the right language. Uh, mm -hmm. because you want to assert that the um, error uh, string value is actually, like, for example, in English and so on. Yes. Um, so these are some like difficulties that we didn't manage to face yet, uh, but indeed we, we are aware of that. Okay. And the second obvious question is about accessibility, right? Yeah. So um, in the same vein that when your error messages or your validation rules can differ from language to language, yep. they can also differ from, let's say, user preference because of accessibility, somebody who has bigger font or mm. whatever. So um, I know it's a, it's kind of a generic question. It's a hard question to, it's a yeah. hard problem to solve, mm. right? But do you think that with work, your, th this particular system can adapt um, like a dynamic problem? I believe it can adapt to some problem from accessibility because like actually it only works on the logical part and you can, as long as you work with bindings, uh, because that's how I, I, we implemented it, um, you can basically uh, fit any UI you want. So the accessibility for the font size and so on is uh, closer to the UI part, so you will define it on the UI and it will have like no impact on the logic. But on the other side, maybe for the accessibility, uh, for the accessibility label, I don't have any intro for that yet. So, I have a last question about um, the point three, the fact that you're using TCA. Uh, do you uh, encounter to try to contact uh, or maybe trying to improve or maybe to do some more pull requests about uh, your way of doing things, like which is really declarative and which is really nice and clear to uh, for people to adapt? Yeah. Uh, well, first, thank you because like it was really important to make it declarative. Uh, at least like to us, because we wanted like to be really easy to the developers to use it and to have less friction as possible to have like configurations or like specific logics and so on. We, want, we really just wanted to have it plug and play. And we believe this uh, API is at least good enough for that. And we didn't. We didn't take the opportunity yet to talk about with the pantry guys, and actually, that's like the first time we shared this to some to an audience. Like we did it, and in the company, a, a colleague of mine that's in the in the crowd coming from Belgium just told me like there is the Swift connection happening, and you helped us build this thing on the validation form, and that would be great like to make it to open it to, uh, to people so that they can ins get inspiration from, from it. So, yeah, I, I, I start uh, by this, uh, sharing it here, uh, but I still feel like a bit, um, not imposter syndrome, but something like that, like not legitimate enough to like say to the pantry guys, like, hey, we came up with that, like, would it be nice to maybe work with that, or I don't know. Apparently not, so, uh, because there was no question. So <laughs> I think everyone understood. Just, just for just to reassure the problem with the imposter syndrome here, who who is thinking about doing something like that for their form validation in the room? Yeah, see, yeah, great, right. yeah, quite a few people. I'm happy actually. with that, and yeah, and actually when I was working, I w when I was creating this talk, and I was I tried to make this uh, solution like pretty. Not abstract, but like the global image of this. Uh, I came up with the graph with like a way to notify the user, to notify the system that the user tapped the button, a way to send this thing. And I was writing it, I was like, that's actually not TCA at all. It 
can just be like by, by via SwiftUI bindings or publishers for people have, who work on like uh, React, React or things like that. So they can really like uh, take this picture and adapt the thing to their own needs. Definitely. Yep. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.